So the policy went through a couple of turns, but you know the basic principle set out in early late 1970s, early 1980s was that the advocate every family should have one child, and in the urban area that was indeed the case for the last you know, th uh, f from 1980 and onward all the way to 2015. But for the rural part of China, there were uh, relaxations put out in uh, middle of 1980s, and the, the dominant version of the one-child policy in the rural part of China what is what we called as 1.5 child. Basically, for families whose first child is a girl, they are they were allowed to have a second. So China went from uh, one child to two child policy in 2016. Uh, now three. Uh, do you think Chinese officials waited too long to go from one to two children? I mean, we, we've seen the delay in the numbers and the population numbers. Yes, that's sort of the assessment, but I don't think we, we should, you know, given the speed China is moving from two to three, and with all the force of power measures they are putting out, they clearly realize the uh, severity of the problem. Health experts warn that China will face pressure about low fertility rates in the future. How may that impact China's economy, both short term and long term? I think you know the the short term effect is sort of already being seen in certain ways, like labor shortage, like you know uh, uh, the certain industry, the, the the education industry is going to be affected and. Uh, but there are also the other side of the equation, the, the aging problem that we see, the, the booming healthcare industry is happening. In longer term, as the lead story uh, uh, put us into this uh, a nice, uh, 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 nice uh, setup, that we know the population is a longer term problem, and it takes at least 20 some years for the current generation to get into labor force to you know, become, uh, uh, be pro become productive. So Beijing has introduced certain measures like uh, tax initiatives to uh, tax incentives to increase the number of children per household. Uh, do you think measures like that will help? And if not, which measures might help the most? You know, I think that those measures are certainly in the right direction in terms of its real effect on ground is yet to be seen based on what we know and what we have learned from other countries that those policies tend to have some marginal effect, but the longer term is that China is not uh, uh, alone, that we all facing the same problem that basically uh, the current generation and possibly future generation are not looking forward to have large family, and that requires some, not economic structural change, but more fundamental social uh, changes. So many developed economies, uh, but the U.S., Japan, Italy, for example, they cite, people there cite the cost of raising children as one of the main reasons for fewer births. Uh, what do you think China can learn from those countries and from what they've done to incentivize, if you will, population replacements? So I think that's sort of, as you know, the, the, the previous question uh, we discussed, the cost cutting basically to reduce the, uh, the, the child care cost as one of the measures, you know, internal maternal uh, uh, welfare and benefit that will be also the, the right direction. But at the same time, if we look into, you know, thinking childbearing as a uh, money-making business, that's, I don't think the family is looking in that direction. And we know that it's not just the, the cost, the, the economic cost itself, it's the social cost, it's all the other fundamental arrangement in this market-based economy we live in.